Hello, I'm Jeremy Pesner. I wrote the initial version of this paper while I was a doctoral student at the Georgia Institute of Technology in 2019. But then I transferred to Carnegie Mellon University, and shortly after that, the Journal of Science Policy and Governance announced its Endless Frontier paper competition, in which it solicited papers proposing bold new science policy ideas. Since I had already written a paper on this topic, I decided to go for it and revised it substantially for submission. I won third place and worked with the editor-in-chief to present it at several different venues following publication. While I had a lot of advice and support from advisors and editors, I was the sole author of this paper. The initial idea for this paper germinated when I attended a panel at a social innovation conference on science and social impact. I've long seen and been excited by technology's potential to change the world, and it was a core motivating value that led me to pursue science and technology policy in the first place. However, the conversation on this panel focused on entrepreneurial and business ventures that spun out of science research. This is great for those who run businesses and business-minded academics, but what about the actual scientists? How are researchers able to best ensure a similar level of social impact directly through the process of science research? The fact that this question was not addressed, even when I brought it up with the panelists, bugged me. So, in my first semester at Georgia Tech, when I was directed to build up a research paper topic, this one came to the fore. I had no prior knowledge in this particular topic, outside of a general background in science and innovation policy. But, of course, I'm a researcher, so I started researching. I was surprised to find a good amount of material out there already, which indicated interest in and discussion around the topic. But it wasn't so much that I felt like I couldn't find something new to say. I learned about the ongoing arguments around whether and how science should be influenced by societal concerns, and what role scientists themselves and funding agencies should play in all this. Once I had read enough material, I was able to arrange it into the step-by-step -step process of considerations that go into the research pipeline. This begins with the funding application for the research, continues through the paper publication, and hopefully concludes with direct application through technology transfer offices or other action-oriented entities. All of those, it seemed, could be improved with a perspective around social impact. The biggest limitation to all of these, I found, was that the process was very insular. One of the great debates around research and research administration was whether it should be the sole domain of scientists or whether other policy actors, administrators, and even average citizens should help guide it as well. Vannevar Bush, one of President Roosevelt's key science advisors who spurred the creation of the National Science Foundation, was adamant that scientists and not politicians uh, were the ones equipped to manage and fund scientific research. And while that there have been different iterations of this science society poll in the decades since, with the space race being a very prominent example, many of the policies and systems that science institutions today are still tipped very heavily in favor of scientists. It does make intuitive sense that scientists should run affairs related to science, but scientists and other science policy stakeholders can often be out of touch with uh, other people in the public. These stakeholders, the public, often receive the bulk of the consequences, both good and bad, of scientific advancement. One key example of how scientists and non-scientists might view research differently is how they even talk or measure impact. Scientists spend a lot of time tracking research papers, so they often look for direct consequences or outputs of those papers. Research papers that are cited by other research papers, for instance, bring a lot of fame to individual scholars. But does that correlate with clear social impacts? No, not really. Others will suggest that research cited in patents is considered to be impactful. But what are patents? They're just documents describing a particular invention that could exist. The Venn diagram of what is patented and what is innovative or impactful only overlaps so much. Many famous technologies have never been patented, like the polio vaccine and USB connection standard. Furthermore, many patents have never resulted in any real technologies, much less real impacts, at all. Therefore, patents can't be used to measure social impact either. This murky mist makes the question of how to measure social, uh, social impact that much trickier, but no less important. There are many public and private organizations that fund science research, and often with different motivations. Industrial labs, the military, and some agencies like the National Institutes of Health have very clear and focused goals. It's unlikely that they would ever fund research whose results could not be clearly linked to advancing their missions. So in that sense, all applied research funded by these types of organizations can likely be said to lead to some kind of clear impact. But there are many types of researches that aren't undertaken in such a focused, goal-oriented fashion. 
Vannevar Bush posited that basic research, motivated purely by scientific curiosity and discovery, would be lead to useful technologies. The key example of nuclear physics leading to the atomic bomb resonated strongly in the wake of World War II. And there are certainly other examples, like physics leading to breakthrough in energy technologies and fundamental understandings of biology leading to new types of medicine. However, we also know that technological and impactful breakthroughs can start from the societal need, such as the space race, like I mentioned previously, as well as technologies like the steam engine. So how do we advance the whole enterprise of science, both basic and applied research, while improving its societal impact? Well, let's start with the National Science Foundation. It's not the largest agency that funds science research, but it is the most broad. Its mission includes support for all fields of fundamental science and engineering, as well as many of the social sciences. So it's the best test case for examining how we can make science as a whole more impactful, no matter the field of focus. The NSF has included a broader impact criterion when evaluating research proposals since the early 1980s, meant to illustrate how research will positively affect the world. However, the possible listed impacts are very broad, such as integrating research and education, or enhancing the infrastructure for research and or education. For the scientists actually trying to consider the broader impacts when applying for funding, this can make implementing them very difficult. There can be a lot of confusion around what qualifies as a broader impact, and whether it's taken as seriously as, as, seriously as the intellectual merit of the research. Within the academy, broader impacts are not often valued very highly, and therefore, there aren't often resources to actually apply or implement them. Moreover, while NSF is the entity that defines and specifies these goals, it is academic researchers themselves who evaluate grants. They are often not trained or focused on how or whether the broader impacts fit the specified criteria, or they can't be reasonably implemented. While it's good that NSF is considering the social outcomes of the research it funds, its broader impacts fall short of assessing true social impact. So how exactly do we approach all of this? The answer is actually fairly simple. Widen the stakeholders who discuss and evaluate research proposals. Scientists are best equipped to evaluate a proposal's intellectual merit, but other stakeholders, the exact composition of which will vary depending on the particular research, are best equipped to evaluate the broader impacts, since they are the broad stakeholders who are actually impacted. This conversation should happen at every stage of the research, beginning with evaluating how the research can apply broadly, moving through how the researchers consider the potential impacts of their findings, and how the ultimate results can translate into practical results outside the academy. If you're watching this, you likely have some level of scientific interest or expertise. This makes you a prime candidate to weigh in on where the future of the scientific enterprise may go. Talk to NSF and other funding agencies, and indicate your interest in connecting science research with societal benefit. There is more focus on this idea than perhaps ever before, so there are many opportunities to move this system forward. I look forward to seeing you all do your part.